Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Oda, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. So, uh, we've been talking to climate change a lot on this show, and it's we're seeing the effects of it in the middle of this pandemic crisis. And I did a story about um, an island in the Antarctic melting a, an extreme amount in nine days. Well, this article was submitted by Nicholas M. Thompson, which you can do the same thing if you go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwin. Nicholas, you've been supporting the show since day one. I really appreciate it. Greenland's ice sheet melts by record amount due to climate change study shows. This was Wednesday, April 15th by Emma Newberger. This was, <laughs> this was in CNBC. Not like Common Dreams or those alternative lefty environmental sites, which I appreciate. This is CNBC reporting this. Now, it should be noted that CNBC puts this on their website to say, oh, we're talking climate change. This almost never makes it into the TV broadcast. Never. And all the web, CNN, all of them do that. Oh, they'll talk about it on their website. And they'll hire somebody, and I don't, I don't know this person. Maybe she's a good journalist who's got a lot of integrity and this, this issue matters. But this will never get this will never get primetime play. Never. You gotta come to this show for this to be talked about. Greenland's ice sheet experienced record melting last year that was driven by hotter temperatures and more frequent atmospheric circulation patterns triggered by climate change, scientists have confirmed. Researchers warn that climate change will make the destructive high pressure atmospheric conditions more common in Greenland, the biggest contributor to global sea level rise. And I'm going to get into the economic impacts of rising sea level. All the coastal cities all over the world, I live in one. It's a tourist place. Obviously, there's nobody traveling now. The tourism has really been crushed by pandemics. But what? a lot of businesses on the water, anywhere you live. When I was in Australia, all these businesses and restaurants and hotels and cool surf shops and all that, what happens? That all goes away. If Greenland's ice sheet were to melt away completely, global sea levels could rise by as much as 23 feet. The stark findings show that researchers could also be underestimating the future melting by about half. Every time there's a study, it's like our, our last predictions were wrong. It's, it's just moving too fast. As most models that project do not account for impacts from changing atmospheric circulation patterns. Greenland lost around 600 billion tons of water in 2019, contributing to a sea level rise of about 1.5 millimeters. Well, that's not a lot of 1.5 mil. That's not a lot, but it keeps rising and it keeps building on top of each other. Greenland's ice sheet is the second biggest in the world and covers 80% of the island. If the ice sheet were to melt away completely, global sea levels could rise by as much as 23 feet, raising serious concerns for coastal communities across the world. So you've got just the, in, the, the initial sort of frontline economic impact, those businesses by the coasts not you know, being shut down. We're seeing what shut down businesses look like in a pandemic. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do this show, this, this, this article, this topic, because we're seeing what happens. We're seeing the interconnectivity of the environment, of workers, and the economy. All of these things that we didn't think about well, it's cheaper to have ventilators and masks made in overseas in China. It's just cheaper. It, it brings more profits for the companies. Oh, wait. When we have to seal our borders from China and Americans are told not to work, we've just created two problems for ourselves. People aren't working and we don't have the equipment to fight this pandemic. If we were making these products here in America, we would just, oh, we're just ramping up production. This pandemic hit, okay, everybody stay at home. The factory workers making the masks and the gloves and the ventilators, okay, you're working overtime. Anybody been laid off, you know, from the 
hotel community, the bartenders and waiters and all those folks you've been laid off. All right, we need you working extra shifts now. We're going to put, you're going to go right to work. See how, how seamless that could be if we did that? So that's, I, I, I always talk to you, right? I always connect the dots for you. I always want to see, I want you to show these aren't individual isolated issues. They're all connected. And so if the sea level goes up by 23% and we lose these global communities, we lose the economies of them, but then where do they move? So I've talked about this before. 30% of America's population is on, is on the eastern seaboard. That's 100 million people. Let's say 100 million people all have to move in. What's going to happen? And all these states that don't, oh, the, the Dakotas and Iowa, that don't have a lot of people living in them, what are they going to do? What would a state like Iowa or, or South Dakota, that, you know, South Dakota has like a million people in the whole state. What if all of a sudden it went from one to four million people, like in the matter of weeks? There wouldn't be any infrastructure. They wouldn't know what to do. They would have tent cities like we have in Los Angeles. They wouldn't, where, where are the schools? Where are they going to live? The jobs? What's going to happen? Where they, where's the food going to come? Where, what, what's all this going to be? That's the, that's the, and we're, you're, everyone getting that now? I've been talking about this, environmentalists have been talking about this for years. I've been talking about this for the three years I've been doing this show. Now we're seeing it. The coronavirus is like, oh shit. Wait a minute, it is all connected. We get our products overseas, we're not doing it here. We're, we're, there's food shortage, you know, like there's empty shelves when this whole thing first started. There's, uh, where is the, how is this all gonna happen? We're seeing all these things we didn't think about. Well, we gotta shut down the schools. Now, wait a minute, the schools were, a lot of kids get their meals at school. What about the low income families? Well, how are they gonna feed those kids and where, where's the food coming? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What about the uh, healthcare workers whose school is their child care? So now wait, if the, if the, if the health care worker can't, they have to stay home and watch their kid because their kid can't go to school. Who's, we need them at the, in the medical facility with the people with the COVID. You see how everything's connected? It's the same thing. I'm showing you the interconnectivity of what we're currently dealing with and how it would happen in the environment. A rise in sea levels could destroy property value in coastal regions, displace residents, and eventually impact global markets. What have the markets done with this pandemic? Nosedive. The stock market is completely dropped. So we're talking about property value. So what's happening with property value now? No one's working. We've got the, the unemployment claims just went from 10 million to 22 million. We've had 22 million people file for unemployment in the last month. That's what we know about. Those are the people that we know are unemployed. What about the people that, I don't know, didn't file for it or, or were, don't qualify? Or the undocumented workers that we've had in this country. It's that's 22 million people that we know about. It's probably double that. We're probably closer to 40 or 50 million people are unemployed today, right now. What's this pandemic going to do to property values? So the same thing with this. You see how this is all connected? In America, I'm going to give you this pretty alarming statistics. I said uh, a third of the country lives on the eastern seaboard, but 40% of the US population lives near the coast. Coast residents represent 40% of the total population and seven, nine, tr almost eight trillion dollars in gross domestic product, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. That's the NOAA, not, that's a government agencies. And I've showed you the map of what, I, I want you to see this, 40%. I'm part of that 40%. I live near the water. So we're seeing, right? You displace these people. They can't work. They're not working. They're not buying stuff. So we, we're seeing our whole economy shut down right now. Let's just look at what we're dealing with right now today to show you what it could be for this, right? So all these people have been furloughed. I'll give you an example. 
Santa Monica, where I live. Santa Monica has a population of 90,000 people. That's the population of Santa Monica. It's not a very big population. On any given day, and I got this statistic from the American Red Cross of Santa Monica, on any given day in Santa Monica, there are somewhere between four and 500,000 people in the city limits as tourists and, and employees. There's a lot of big, a lot of entertainment industry has big offices here. There's all these big, big hotels, all those employees. So you're talking about three to 400,000 people are not coming into Santa Monica now because of this shutdown. The streets are empty, the stores are shut down, unless, I'm sure there's a handful of people coming into Santa Monica working at the essential places, but, so you have 400,000, three to 400,000 people not coming to work every day, not going out to lunch, not buying coffee, not shopping, not doing any of the tourist things, the pier is shut down, the Third Street Promenade, the movie theaters, the shops, the malls, shut down, shut down. That's just one city. That's one city that depends upon. So the tech, a lot of tech and show, you know, Netflix and all, a lot of those people have offices here and the TV networks and the, uh, the, the, the movie studios have, have offices here in Santa Monica. Now, a lot of those people are working from home, but again, they're working from home. So if they don't live in the Santa Monica city limits, they're not shopping here. They're shopping close to their homes, wherever those are. And by all those big businesses, there's all these restaurants and coffee shops and everything. They're all closed. Maybe they're doing a little takeout business, but it's got to be nothing compared to what they were doing. So that's just one city. So this pandemic and the city of Santa Monica is having a meeting about how they might have to cut down services. So this city, and I've talked about this before, the federal government can just issue currency from the Federal Reserve, give it, itself as much money as it wants. Local governments, cities, counties, states are dependent upon tax revenue. So if you have 400,000 people, that's 400,000 people spending money every day and the sales tax, and the sales tax goes to the state of California, but California, like most states, cities can add their own. The state sales tax is seven and three quarters percent. LA County adds a, a half a percentage point and city of Santa Monica adds. San Francisco does it, Sacramento, San Diego, all the cities do that, right? So you have 400,000 people a day shopping in Santa Monica, all that sales tax revenue, the city isn't getting anymore. The city of Santa Monica also has a $1 per hotel room per night fee that goes directly to the city. That's why the city has nice parks, it has its own police department, its own fire department. Do you see that? So, this nice beach city and all the nice beach cities, San Diego, all the, all the just, 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 just in California, that does all this tours, Seattle, Miami, Jacksonville, Tampa, New York City, Boston, all by the water. Too much flooding because the sea levels have gone up 23 feet. What happens? Where do those people go? What happens to the revenue? Where does it go? Do you see this? This is why we need to deal with climate change. And I talk about this with relation to the pandemic because we can argue how this government should or should not be reacting, but one thing we can, we can see, there is a, across the country and across the world, everybody's trying to do something about it, right? We are starting to flatten the curve because of all these stay-at-home orders and all this stuff and wear masks and social distancing. Those things are actually working. What if we applied all those things that are being done all over the world to deal with this climate change and 23 feet of rising sea level. It's, remember, because in America they said, if we don't do social, a, a month ago, we're gonna lose a million to two million people. So they, they we have seen that graph with this, the, the, the chart. So they want, if we do this, all these measures, stay at home orders, we can flatten the curve. And now they're talking about it might be 100 to 200,000 people, which is still awful, but we're literally saving a million to two million lives. We could do that with the environment. COVID-19 is not going to kill everybody on planet Earth. Climate collapse will. The rising sea level is just one aspect of how bad this could get. So if we started doing 
a global pandemic of climate collapse, of a s s preventing the sixth extinction event, oh, maybe the sea levels just rise a little bit. Maybe we flatten that curve. Maybe we put a lot of money in. Re look, how, look how creative and innovative everybody's being in the middle of this pandemic. Isn't it? It's, it, it's, it's kind of, I look for positive news in this. I'm seeing people being really creative. I talk about this a lot. Ford and General Electric getting together to make ventilators. Local companies. There's this guy in Texas who made these little ventilators in his garage, and now he's like employing his friends and family and volunteers, and he's he's shipping these these ventilator like they almost look like 50s sci-fi movie space helmets. He's shipping them to Boston and New York. He, that's just a guy in his backyard in Texas came up with a great idea. Look how innovative we're being in this crisis. We're forced. Crisis creates innovation. Look what we could do. Look how many jobs we could create. That's why, like, Medicare, we all need free health care now. We, a Green New Deal could put, be putting everybody to work. We could be putting everybody to work First and foremost, dealing with that we need the, the medical equipment, but also long-term plan of, and everyone's gonna be put to work with the Green New Deal. Do you see this? I know it sounded like I kind of went all over the place, but I didn't, I was connecting all of this. This is why everything is important, everything relates. And we can all be part of this solution. Because there's answers out there we haven't even thought of yet. And if we put bold leadership, which we do not have, the Democrats, Bernie, they're not bold leadership. They're just sellout corporate people. Sorry, he's just less of a corporate sellout. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But I'm telling you, we could get stuff really done. And it won't be with Joe Biden, who's a rapist with dementia. It's not gonna be with Trump, who's a climate change denier, and a rapist, and a cokehead. It won't be with any of those parasites. It'll be with us, you and me, forcing the issue with general strikes. That's what it's gonna take. Thanks for watching. Shave your knuckles for justice. Boom. Hey everybody, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button, even if you've done it before because they're unsubscribing many of you every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also, support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. Thanks for watching.